you know, our population in Arizona um, might be small, but certainly it does have an impact, um, I think, politically and economically um, in our ability to organize um, and, and be, um, you know, a large force. But still, I think with um, the small numbers that we have, we have made a lot of headway in Arizona. I think that no matter where uh, Black people are in the world and no matter if their numbers are small or large, um, we're going to have a certain lived experience that is shaped by our skin color, uh, by and large, in our various tones. I agree with you. It is a lot to do with, you know, how it shapes our world. Um, I see it in the education world as when we're 6%, we have to, as board members, fight hard to make sure our 6% of our African-American children are getting the same equitable education as the other kids. When minorities take tests, they don't take tests the same as every as our Caucasian kids do, that we have to make sure that those tests are are equal to what our kids need. And, you know, they're making sure that we're equitable when we start looking at funds and stuff throughout our district to make sure that our African-American children are still looked at and counted just because they're in the smallest percentage doesn't mean that they're not important. I'm glad that you brought that up because low numbers of students and low numbers of uh, teachers and administrators who are of African descent um, certainly um, translates in, in a different way. If we had larger numbers, we would have, um, I guess, more power. But, um, you know, I see like with this DEI forum, um, you know, it's not like a magical wand that is going to turn us all into like um, practitioners of equity. And so um, I think really we have to look a little deeper at how we can as a people and as a community really do away with those vestiges of colonialism that, you know, are still prevalent in, in many ways in our school system. As governing board members and we're leaders of our, our school districts, that we make sure that the diversity in our schools are reflecting in our staff. Mm-hmm. And because kids learn from people who look like them. And the staff that is not, make sure that they understand microaggressions. They may understand that what they some of the things they say can affect and hurt all minority children in different ways. Being a Black woman in Arizona, it's depends on where I am and who I'm talking to. Of course, I get a lot of love in my neighborhood of Sugar Hill. Um, but, you know, anywhere else I go, I, I am looked upon as big haired woman who sometimes is too loud or too political or I guess too black. It's something that we live with every day and, and of certainly growing up and, and being an adult now, you know, you learn to cope with it, but you know, it is tiring. I had one teacher told me that, you know, as a, a kid, you say you want to be the president of the United States. And she goes, well, maybe you need to get more real um, realistic um, dreams because that doesn't look like it's highly likely to happen. And for me, at being third and fourth grade, that hurt. They don't see me as a woman. They don't see the, the strengths and the things I have. They only see me as black. And you know, I'm going to be black for the rest of my life, but you need to be able to judge me as the person I am and not just by the color of my skin. And I get that quite a bit, especially being of the darker race of a black woman. That's why I work so hard with the black African-American women in my districts and the students to give them that empowerment that you are beautiful the way you are. No one should not be allowed to tell you how loud you are, how you wear your hair, if you wear your hair or earrings. Sadie, your hair is beautiful. And we should be able to say that out loud and not be afraid to.